in this discussion we are exclusively going to focus on the short term regulation which is the most high yield one the first one a very important reflex i told you i will not write the reflex name first understood the concept whenever there is increase in blood pressure in all of us there will be quickly reflex decrease in blood pressure increase in bp is followed by a quick decrease in blood pressure that is why it is a classical example for a negative feed back system regulation of blood pressure by this reflex is a negative feedback system increase in bp followed by quick decrease it is a reflex the name of this reflex is barrow reflex whenever we talk about any reflex what dr krishna kumar taught you in neurophysiology exclusively in motor physiology i taught you you have to give importance to something called as reflex arc which is going to have five important components the first one is the sensor or receptor the second one you need to give the input using sensory afferents where the input is given to the center in response to that the center will give its output because of that output we will see the desired response that's all all reflex arcs start with an r and end with an r we are going to apply this principle in our barrow reflex first and foremost look very carefully you need receptor for this reflex which is going to sense increase in blood pressure in response to increase in blood pressure this receptor gets stretched that is why it is an example for a stretch receptor this stretch receptor is going to sense pressure because the stimulus is increase in bp it is the pressure that is stretching this receptor anything concerned with the pressure we use the word barrow cha receptor that is why it is barrow receptor this type of barrow receptor is exclusively abundant in the neck region they are usually two in number we call them as remember carotid sinus and aortic arch very important never forget for your life so the first box is opened for barrow reflex you need a receptor they are the stretch receptors that sense increase in pressure they are barrow receptor what are their names the first one is carotid sinus the second one is aortic arch once the receptor box is opened we now need the sensory supply for them the input look very carefully most important point is coming here we have our carotid sinus i am writing this side aortic arch now we are going to understand the sensory afferents in this section first and foremost this carotid sinus is usually innervated by cranial nerve 9 which is our glosso pharyngeal nerve this aortic arch is usually innervated by cranial nerve 10 which is our vagus now listen very carefully guys the special branch of glosso pharyngeal nerve that goes to carotid sinus is a named nerve that is called as herring's nerve the special branch of vagus that is going to innervate our aortic arch is also a named nerve that is called as sian's nerve so herring's nerve branch of glosso pharyngeal that innervates carotid sinus sian's nerve branch of vagus that innervates our aortic arch together this two important cranial nerves which are 9 and 10 are innervating our sinuses that is why they are also called as sinus nerves 
they buffer changes in blood pressure that is why they are also called as buffer nerves simple what are all these two important sinus nerves 9 and 10 they are also called as buffer nerves important they are going to convey the sensory input what is that sensory input sir it is increase in blood pressure always remember guys our baro receptors are always activated only by increase in blood pressure baro receptors are always activated by increase in blood pressure this sensory input of increase in blood pressure they will convey to the center through glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve now two boxes opened receptor over sensory input over now this increase in blood pressure this is our input is coming to the third component that is our center what is the center for this baro reflex the center lies in medulla so the input is increase in blood pressure we are giving to the center that is medulla in response to that the medulla have two important outputs so the fourth component is output what are these two important outputs sir we have sympathetic output we have parasympathetic output because of this outputs we are going to have a final response tell me increase in blood pressure because of this reflex the response is going to be decrease in blood pressure the response is going to be decrease in blood pressure now you help me guys if you activate which nervous system bp will fall if you inhibit which nervous system bp will fall to get this response of decrease in blood pressure our sympathetic nervous system will be inhibited in this reflex our parasympathetic nervous system will be activated in this reflex what is this reflex sir baro reflex this is the most important take home message in response to increase in blood pressure sympathetic inhibition will happen parasympathetic activation will happen because of that the response is decrease in blood pressure not only that there is parasympathetic activation what is one more thing that is going to decrease automatically as a part of this reflex heart rate will also decrease because there is parasympathetic activation bp will fall heart rate will fall this is the response of this reflex what reflex we have discussed so far baro reflex in response to increase in blood pressure there will be decrease in blood pressure and decrease in heart rate now i just mentioned you the names sympathetic and parasympathetic now we are going to see the exact locations look carefully guys i told you the center is medulla if you understand carefully we are building from simple to complex concepts in medulla where is the center we have something called as nts what is this nts sir nucleus tractus solitarius very important it was a recent ini ctmcq what is the center for baro reflex nucleus tractus solitarius this nucleus tractus solitarius first activates caudal ventrolateral medulla what is this listen very carefully caudal ventrolateral medulla it is activating cvlm with the help of a very important neurotransmitter that is glutamate this center nucleus tractus solitarius with the help of glutamate activating cvlm now this cvlm is going to inhibit rostral ventrolateral medulla what is this rostral ventrolateral medulla important point guys this rvlm is considered to be the sympathetic center 
So as a part of this reflex sympathetic inhibition happens, it means rostral ventrolateral medulla is inhibited. What is inhibiting this? Caudal ventrolateral medulla is inhibiting rostral ventrolateral medulla with the help of this neurotransmitter GABA. This neurotransmitter names are important. Nucleus tractus solitarius with the help of glutamate activates CVLM. CVLM with the help of GABA inhibit our sympathetic center that is RBLM. It is also the same nucleus tractus solitarius which is going to activate parasympathetic nervous system in this reflex. Where the neurons are located? In something called as nucleus ambiguous. Parasympathetic neurons are located in nucleus ambiguous. Very important concept. As a part of this reflex, sympathetic inhibition is happening means RVLM is inhibited. As a part of this reflex, parasympathetic is activated means activation of nucleus ambiguous. Very simple. Eventually, a small summary. This is the take home message for you guys. Whenever there is increase in blood pressure, it will always lead to sympathetic nervous system inhibition. It will always lead to parasympathetic nervous system activation. Eventually, we are going to get decrease in blood pressure and decrease in heart rate. What is this reflex? Baroreflex. Now, look carefully, guys. I am not going to confuse you at all. It is very simple. Whenever there is increase in blood pressure, always there will be reflex decrease in heart rate. We are seeing when there is increase in blood pressure, there is reflex decrease in heart rate. Underline there is a reflex decrease in heart rate. It is for this reason we always say blood pressure and heart rate are inversely related. Right inside a big box. Blood pressure and heart rate are always inversely related because increase in BP leading to reflex decrease in heart rate. We call this as Mary's law in cardiovascular physiology. What is Mary's law, sir? Blood pressure and heart rate are inversely related. So far, we have discussed about baroreflex, which means increase in BP will be followed by a decrease in BP and decrease in heart rate. Why is this happening? Because of sympathetic inhibition and parasympathetic activation. All right, guys, we are discussing about baroreflex and the baroreceptors. Now, there are certain experiments that are performed on this baroreceptors. So, there is a possibility they will give you this experiment in a scenario and they will ask you what is going to be the effect. To understand this, broad considerations, I will tell you a few. First and foremost, it is usually done in carotid sinus. Which baroreceptor? Carotid sinus. What is this carotid sinus? It is a dilation that is seen in internal carotid artery. Very important point. This carotid sinus is a small dilation that is seen in internal carotid artery. Second consideration, whenever there is increase in blood pressure, we all know our baroreceptors will be activated. In response to this, there will be sympathetic inhibition and parasympathetic activation. Now, most importantly, the opposite. Whenever there is decrease in blood pressure, look very carefully, our baroreceptors will be inhibited. Increase in BP activates them. Decrease in BP inhibits them. Whenever there is inhibition of baroreceptors, sympathetic nervous system will be activated now. 
and parasympathetic nervous system will be inhibited. This is opposite. What happens during increase in BP? What happens during decrease in BP? You need to remember. You have this in mind. Now, first experimental maneuver. What they give you is occlusion of common carotid artery. What will be the effect? To understand this, look very carefully. We have our common carotid artery. That will give rise to external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. What I told you? This carotid sinus is a small dilation that is found in the internal carotid artery. Now what is the maneuver here? We are occluding this common carotid artery that will flow like this. If you occlude this common carotid artery, Definitely in this carotid sinus, there is decrease pressure in carotid sinus. That means there is going to be baroreceptor inhibition. When there is baroreceptor inhibition, I told you there will be sympathetic activation. So what is going to be the effect of this experiment? There will be increase in blood pressure there will be increase in heart rate because of sympathetic activation. What I told you, occlusion of common carotid artery, definitely there will be decrease in pressure in carotid sinus. Baroreceptors are inhibited, leading to sympathetic activation. The effect is increase in BP and increase in heart rate. Now, second maneuver. You will clearly understand. They will do something called as clamping. A small clamp is introduced here. Above carotid sinus. Now, the same diagram. This is our common carotid artery. We have external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. This is our carotid sinus. If you place a clamp above this carotid sinus, Automatically, there is going to be pressure build up in carotid sinus. So, automatically, the baroreceptor is going to be activated here. When baroreceptors are activated, there will be sympathetic inhibition. That is why the effect here is simple to understand. Decrease in blood pressure, decrease in heart rate. So a clamping that is done above carotid sinus. Now the pressure is built up in the carotid sinus. Baroreceptors are activated. There will be sympathetic inhibition. The effect is decrease in BP and decrease in heart rate. Simple. We are left with one final maneuver that is clamping below carotid sinus. Now it is obviously very easy. Please help me guys. I won't talk much. We have the common carotid artery, internal carotid artery, external carotid artery. This is our carotid sinus. If you place a clamp below carotid sinus, what will happen? Automatically pressure is going to decrease in carotid sinus. Because the clamp is placed below the carotid sinus, pressure decreases in carotid sinus. So automatically, what will happen to our baroreceptors? Inhibited. Now what will happen? There will be sympathetic activation. Because of sympathetic activation, the effect is going to be increase in blood pressure and increase in heart rate. So three maneuvers we have discussed. Occlusion of common carotid arteries. We have seen increase in BP, increase in heart rate. Clamping above carotid sinus. We have seen decrease in BP, decrease in heart rate. Now finally, clamping below carotid sinus. The effect is increase in blood pressure and increase in heart rate. The basis is very simple to understand. Increase in pressure activates baroreceptors. Decrease in pressure inhibits baroreceptors.